Welcome back to Straight Out of the Box. In this episode, we're going to look at the biggest thing to hit the streets of Theros since Xenagos. This is Kalemne, Disciple of Iroas. So overall, I think Kalemne is pretty well costed. She's 4 for 3 power, 3 toughness, double striker, vigilance. She has two relevant creature types, giant and soldier. And in our tournament, she was one of the few decks that performed the best. The deck is fast. You either win quickly or you lose quickly. If you're looking for deep thoughts, strategic plays, and tricky interactions, this is not the deck for you. You don't win through combo, you win through combat. You're going to turn stuff sideways to make more stuff, and then turn that stuff sideways again. Surprisingly enough, this Boros deck runs 11 mana rocks. This gives the deck an incredibly good chance of having at least one in your opening hand, which is what you really want anyway. Kalemne only gains experience counters through casting huge fatties, and this will get us there faster and more efficiently. Urza's Incubator also does an incredible job and deserves an honorable mention, since it allows us to get our creatures out earlier and can help Kalemne cost less later on in the game. As far as the design is concerned, Kalemne isn't that far off from what you'd expect from a normal Boros commander. Her largest advantage is that she's relatively cheap for what she brings to the field. Having double strike and vigilance and decent power and toughness means she'll give other Boros commanders a run for their money since she doubles as a good attacker and a good blocker. Beyond that though, she's pretty simple. She wants you to cast big creatures, put equipment on her, and to attack every turn. Her having vigilance without having to equip her with anything or enchant her with anything is her biggest boon, but I mean it's easily replaceable with an enchantment or an equipment, like I said. Speaking of equipment, there isn't very much in the deck. The deck does have one of the best new pieces of equipment to come out in a long while, Blade of Selves, but sadly the deck itself lacks many good creatures when compared to the other decks to use it with. Lightning Greaves, however, is a welcome reprint. It's one of those cards that seems to creep up every now and then, and it's good to have the price reset back down to a manageable level. Just like the other 2015 Commander decks, there are 39 lands in this deck. However, unlike some of the decks with lower curves, like Daxos, Kalemne really wants you to hit your land drops. This is especially important if, for whatever reason, you don't have one of those few early turn ramp artifacts. Ultimately, I think the deck has the right amount of lands, it just lacks any way to reliably get them out besides Oreskos Explorer. I was quite impressed with the creature selection for the deck, and it was very enjoyable. There were some interesting and underused inclusions that I thought were kind of fun, all things considered. Desolation Giant, a card that is often overlooked, served both thematically as well as a decent board whip for the deck. I was also very happy to see that Gisela was reprinted for the deck. Spell-wise, there were enough instants and sorceries to help us with our attack until dead strategy. There wasn't really anything new besides the confluence, but I found cards like Warstorm Surge acted as removal as well as damage to players, and the deck had ample red damage-based board wipes. My biggest gripe with the deck is in reality my biggest problem with Boros commanders in general. The decks are too linear. Basically, you play lands to cast big creatures, which are only really good to swing for damage, to basically pass your turn, to cast another land, to cast another creature, to do it over again and over again and over again. There isn't really much excitement beyond the attack step on your turn, and even then they could have given you extra ones, but they didn't. Improvements, like the Daxos tech, can be found in a pre-existing thread on Reddit. I will be posting the link in the About section below. Overall, the deck played incredibly well out of the box. This is despite the fact that the curve seemed to start only at 5 in terms of action, but there never really seemed to be a game where there wasn't ample ramp or ways to reduce the mana cost for the deck. Frankly, the only time it did seem to struggle was when mass land destruction was used, or when they were just denied resources or spells. I'd give Wade into Battle 7 on 10 for playability. It does well right out of the box. It has decent answers to creatures, enchantments, and artifacts. You have a very clear path to victory, and the deck has enough high-costed creatures so you don't feel useless in the late game. Thematically, there is an underlying theme of giants, angels, and soldiers. The tribals are cute, but they aren't as interesting or engaging as the other four commanders, but it is there. I'd give the deck about a 5 or a 6 in theme. It isn't relevant to how to play the deck, but I can see the argument that someone would make overall about how there are huge giants, angels, and soldiers. Thanks again for watching, and as always, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.